quickly and welcome to episode 218 of the weekly weekly podcast thank you very much for joining us uh, a big thanks to neve boyce for coming on last week and um, we talked about uh, her novels obviously but about um historical fiction in general and also about witches which was a good conversation because um but they weren't really witches. I don't know if you know that, but they weren't. But we, we talked about, uh, you know, the looking back and how we can kind of clear people's name from being called witches and stuff like that. So it was really interesting. Go and have a listen. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. It does help uh, an awful lot. Uh, our guest this week is uh, an ultra runner. And I just have written down a general all rounder. I hope that's all right. Uh, <laughs> Neve Fitzpatrick. How are you doing, Neve? Hey, Derek. How are you? It's I'm, good to be on again, for sure. Yeah. Um, mm. If people don't know, Neve was on, uh, when I was doing the live and, and joyful stuff on uh, during lockdown, we were trying to figure out the year. We don't really know. Um, no, about 21, I think, was it? Yeah, tw- 20, 21. I would say 21, but it was one or the other. Yeah. And um, yeah. so we were just kind of laughing about the fact that uh, we've all... Uh, We've all changed quite a bit. We've all <laughs> we're all doing different things. We're good oh, or bad. <laughs> we're good or bad. We're we are about to find out. But I do want to ask you, Neve. Um, knowing yeah. uh, all the stuff that you do, we're recording this on Easter Sunday. Have you indulged in any chocolate? I actually don't eat chocolate. <laughs> really? At all. I don't eat chocolate. I just don't. I just don't like it. Oh, yeah, so, so, people so, think it's strange. Uh, well, I don't know mm. if it's strange, but I suppose. Well, it's just because we grow up at I suppose. What so what would you what would be your substitute for, for would you like sweet stuff in general or no? Well I've just had Easter dinner at my uh, sister's house and I just had like fruit. <laughs> They're really? all on cherry trifle and whatnot, but yeah, just like fruit and grapes, berries, it was fine. After my dinner, it was lovely. Well, you can't yep. really lose with that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Um, I I have had a bit of chocolate, but look, uh it's Easter. It's Easter and I don't like go overboard and I always feel like, I think we're all like this where we've done, I did, a, I went for a run this morning so I feel a little bit all right. Yeah, myself. yeah, you're allowed. You're I'm allowed. allowed. Um, <laughs> Neve, we always go back to the, the beginning. Um, can you give us a, a history of your upbringing, please? So I was born and raised in Leash. I grew up on a farm um, and yeah, I've kind of lived here till I was about 21 mm-hmm. and then I went travelling. For about four or five years and then I came back here and then yeah after traveling so much I guess at least just got a bit boring for me <laughs> I needed something else it was either travel again or, or move somewhere else and I, I became in love with the coast mm-hmm. and sea dipping and I was living in Leash at the time and I kept commuting up and down it was actually just after lockdown when we were allowed to travel again and then I met a good few people up there from like the swimming community and they were like you need to move up here you can't keep working and traveling and driving up so I applied for a job. I actually got a job in Dunleary. Mm-hmm. And then I was commuting for a month. And I was like, oh, my God, what am I have to do? It was like the worst thing ever. <laughs> and then I just kept looking on Daft. And I actually got a house up there. So then I moved up there. And, yeah, I just would never move back here again. <laughs> yeah. I, it's... Like, I love it. I'm actually home today for Easter. Yeah. I came down the country this morning. And I'll stay down here uh, until tomorrow. But, like, that is just, it's nice to come back. Like, I really do shut down a little bit down here. Mm. It's kind of my way of, like, a little bit of like resetting almost I do get great sleeps but like I could never live down here again well yeah it's nice to come down to the country but yeah I mean I'd say a lot of people could probably kind of agree with you on those certain things because like you said you've done a bit of traveling and people will have gone Mm. to places kind of maybe America or maybe Australia or wherever it might be and yeah see different things and start like you have and we, we'll talk about it you know start different hobbies maybe or you know different lifestyles yeah. even yeah and start meeting people and then you get drawn away from it and it is nice to move away from from home I think and, and it's lovely but yeah. it's also lovely to come home then as well you know what I mean nice big country house big farm and like my brother has four kids and they all kind of like my sister lives in a field next door my brother lives in a field that <laughs> that way and we're just like all three houses just come together and it's nice yeah that, Dublin that's... can be mad like, I live a really hectic lifestyle in Dublin mm-hmm. like I wouldn't have it any other way I choose to live that way up there but it just suits me that's just yeah. like who I am <laughs> yeah oh well that's that's perfect though like because there is you don't find that out unless you actually try to move yeah, or try to, to yeah exactly you've... and I think traveling to kind of it changed me because yeah. sure, I went traveling on my own at 21 and I came back when I was like 25 I think that's, almost 26 that's where did and you go I came back and then you, you obviously want more then you know yeah 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 uh, did, where did you go when you went traveling all over like uh, 21 I went to Vancouver 
right. for two years. That was like, that's my favorite place in the world. If I was to move somewhere in the morning, I would go back there. And that's what really got me into the outdoors. Like I started to hike out there um, because like the mountains, the skiing, the snowboarding, the hikes, everything was incredible. And then mm. my visa was up and I was like, oh, I don't want to go home. So I went to Australia for a couple of years and then I just kind of ended up coming back after that. That's I traveled heaps in between as well. Um, but yeah, I ended up just coming home. Yeah, nice. Like um, so when, uh, we always ask this as well, Neve. when did you first become aware of mental health? So, um, going back when I was 17, um, yeah, I was about 17. I was doing my leaving start at the time. And just uh, things were happening at home and life got a little bit stressful in between my exams and all. And I actually was like suffering like bad with an eating disorder, to be okay. honest. And I went to college in Atlowan, your good old town. And there I was studying there like um for a couple of months. And then I just got really bad because I was down there living, trying to live the college life. So I took out of college and I was put into care. And then, yeah, I was like hospitalized for a few months. And then I went to private sessions in Dublin. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, you kind of learn about yourself through like therapy and you know what I mean? Like that when you become really ill. Um, and that's when I was at a stage where I felt like strong again. That's when I decided to travel. Okay. So like right. from 17 to 21, I was probably bad. Yeah. And then when I hit 21, I was like, right, let's go. So I, yeah, was strong enough to, to leave. And then the traveling really, really made me who I am today. And that's, I think that's why I'm the way I am. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but like, you know. When I, you go through I, shit like that as well, like it really, really does make you a strong person. Yeah. I, I was yeah. going to say that. And like clearly uh, with regards to how you train um the mental yeah. aspect comes in an awful lot with it For and sure. you know yeah. that that idea of you know obviously you're you're comfortable enough to kind of talk about it now and yeah. it's yeah. it's not all like when you're in the middle of it i i have experienced it's mm. obviously a different experience but uh, when you're in yeah. the middle of it you don't want to say anything to anyone you want to just be quiet no. And I wouldn't talk about my past, like I'm eating disorder. I never would. But yeah. like sometimes it's a good thing to bring it up because because of who I am today. Like, yep. like that's kind of how I who I am, you know, kind of maybe who I am. Yeah, of course. Like, of course, it's, it's such a massive thing. And, you know, speaking of uh, who you are and uh, what you've become, um, I want to start off by asking, because people might not know what this is. Um, what exactly is ultra running? So ultra running is anything like longer than a marathon. So it can be anything up to like a hundred kilometers. So I joined, I always was into, I was into hiking. I always loved the mountains, always. So I was hiking. I used to go to Connemara every weekend religiously with a group of people, like, like even Saturday, Sunday, and then come home like on a Sunday night at 10 and get up for work at like five. Um, And then I just, I don't know. I was like, the hikes got a little bit too slow. Okay. I was like, I want to run these mountains. Um, so then I joined the group. There's a really, really good running group here in Dublin. We meet every Saturday morning at Crew of Woods. And we do like, we couldn't do like 10K, 17, 20K, 30K. And it was just, yeah, I just fell in love with it. And the group is amazing. So like every now and again, the club have events. And then obviously like they tell you about events that you could run for, join for. And then, yeah, I just realized that I was like, really good at like running mountains it's kind of just a natural thing <laughs> I was strong on the mountains but I would train a lot as well like that's my yeah. job I'm a fitness coach and I always do a bit of strength and conditioning so I have that bit of strength behind me and then yeah then this big ultra race came up and I was like let's go Um, the longest I would have done before that was like 30 kilometers okay. I do a lot of adventure races as well but like adventure races is split between a kayak, a bike, and a cycle. So I wouldn't like 40, 50k that way, but like all feet, all mountains. Um, so yeah, last Saturday I done an ultra and I like I was so surprised. At like 42 kilometers, I still felt good. I remember the last race I done, it was 30k, and I remember crossing that line. I lost a toe. Oh, big one. Um, I lost a toenail, I sprained my feet, I got took off the runners, I fucked them in the bin. The weather was shit, and I was like, I'm that's it. And it's funny when you go out to run over 50 kilometers, you actually like you're out there because like 42 kilometers, I still felt good. Like, don't get me wrong, you're sore. My knees, my hips, my glutes, my hamstrings, but like it's doable. And the last 10K, I was like, right, I'm going to get sick. 
um because there's two massive inclines left but like it would have been a long race if i had to do it by myself but i was stead with the my running coach and yeah. another guy for the majority of it and in the last 10k i was like right see his letter um and then one of the other guys from the group came up behind me so i kind of ended up finishing with him but other that would have been a long 53k on your own <laughs> i wouldn't like walking uh, out it's uh, because obviously i follow you on instagram since, since you were on yeah. and um yeah you know to, to kind of uh, see the pictures and stuff and you saying like you're an ultra runner and it's obviously a huge thing for you. Um, yeah. When people kind of uh, look at something like that, it's immediately pops into their head that it's impossible and they couldn't do it. And, you know, it sounds a lot. It does sound it, a lot. It is definitely a lot. But, <laughs> but you know, the idea of like people sometimes look at uh, something that someone has done on Instagram and they say, well, I can't do that. So they rule out everything. So they don't do a 10K or they don't do yeah. anything rather than maybe starting a 10K. And I, 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 you've probably heard this way more than I have, but I did a, a couple of um, half marathons last year and someone said to me a couple of weeks ago that they were doing their first 10K and they kind of said, well, it's it's nothing compared. And you immediately want to say, well, it's not nothing because it's your first time you're doing 10. Like you had to start somewhere, Neve, as well, didn't you? Exactly, exactly. Because one of my my sister actually works with a girl that had done her first 5K the same day I was doing the ultra. And she was in work with my sister and my sister had told her about me. And then she messaged me, been like, I can't believe it on 50. It was just in my first five. And I said, well, every kilometer counts. Yeah, yeah. You should be proud of yourself that you've run five. Yeah, You know what I mean? Because yeah. who knows where it might take you? Because like I've always run, I've always been into fitness, but like, just the distances and obviously the training has become massive. Mm-hmm. And I think my lifestyle in Dublin has helped that because there's so much available. Yeah. And sometimes I think there's too much available because I'm like, I need to say no because it's like always like a like thousand revs all the yeah. time between sea dips and saunas and running clubs and jiu-jitsu and work and yoga and general meetups, you know yeah. what I mean? But it's good. It's good. Yeah, it's good. And it, like it, like you were saying about it, like it suits your your lifestyle and your personality which is great yeah, I, I think that. you know yeah. the the idea of um uh, marathon training for instance and people will do it through maybe apps and stuff but they'll, they'll run like maybe certain distance one day the next day they might run further yeah. what way were you kind of planning it out so on the hills we were clocking up distance so okay. i started with the group doing 10 right. because i wasn't familiar with the pace i wasn't familiar with the group the level and then 10 was good. And then I was like, we'll do more. So I was picking up then to maybe 20K. And we were doing that constantly. But like that, there, like, it, it just consistently, like mm-hmm. even just bashing out 20 kilometers on the hills every Saturday helped. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then maybe doing doubles, maybe doing 20 on a Saturday and then maybe doing another 20 on a Sunday. Um, and then I just kept, kept clocking up the distance. And then there's a few in the group that would be kind of at that same level. So then we decided maybe some Saturdays we'll do more. And then yeah. we decided together, I think it was about eight or nine of us from the club that's, that signed up for this ultra. So we kind of had each other to, to train with. And it was just a nice goal to have as well. And we had each other to train with. So it was, the, it, it was easier, mentally easier, you know what I mean? But I run a lot during the week. I run every day really, but like flat, mostly yeah. road, five, six K. And then the weekends, I, I stick to the long endurance. Right. So it's kind of a... Uh... That again, like we, it's it's always going back to the same thing of consistency and 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 working that are around that. I think, yeah, um, yeah. I, I think other people would be also interested in the fact that you do so much. Um, how do you work your nutrition? Uh, is it is it a, um, a experience or is it yeah you through like somebody? I'm at a stage now, like I am not a foodie. And okay. I'll say this a lot. I eat because I have to fuel my body because yeah. <laughs> I train so much. Um, I eat the same thing every day. So I pretty much have a very like strict, disciplined, solid routine throughout the week from Monday to Sunday. So I eat the same because my training is the same. So I know how yeah. it works. Um, now don't get me wrong, coming up to the ultra that week, I because I'm so sh- like structured, I did find it very hard to taper back my mm. other training and eat more because I'm just so used to what I do. That was actually probably one of the hardest things before. I was like, I can't believe I have to eat more. And they were like, I would absolutely love if I was told I had to eat so much food and not train as much. But I'm like, so routine. So like half seven comes and there's rounds of jujitsu. Like, I just have to be there. Yeah. 
you know, I don't get wrong, the Friday before it, I cut back my training a lot. I did yeah. taper down a little bit and then just try to increase. But like even the Saturday and like even for a solid week after the ultra, my stomach was still a little bit like dodge. Really? Like I remember after the ultra, I had bought like turkey burgers, rice, bagels, um, greens, just to have when I came back and I just couldn't like stomach it. Wow. But like everyone was posted into the chat on like the third nachos and I'm like, how are you eating this food? But I guess it just, just takes time for your body to adjust as well. But it is really important as well to get yeah, the, I, the right fuel. I'd say like the the body has to be in, in some some state of shock, you know, anyway. I, I would imagine. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. because you know the next I think people and and myself included would be wondering about how even someone as fit as fit as yourself, how you felt the next morning. I felt good. I think you're on a high as well. Though. Right. You're yeah, still yeah. on an absolute high. Don't get me wrong. Like I was sore. My yeah. knees were sore. I told myself Sunday. Me, if you are not training, I mentally had to tell myself 10,000 times. So I got up Sunday morning and went for a walk. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I live in Dalky. I actually got a lovely house in Dalky since I spoke with you last. So, yeah. Like, I love it. And I just went up around Kleine and just came back around, did a nice little loop, and then sauna, sea dip, and then just chilled out for the evening. But, um, yeah. I just had to like tell myself. <laughs> just had to chill out for for a bit because uh, for, yeah, for one day. <laughs> yeah, for for one for one whole day. I think yeah. um, you know the idea of uh, and you kind of mentioned it um, already, but the idea of the voice in your head being the loudest, you know, voice of yeah. all. And yeah, when you you did mention that you were out um with people, so obviously that was a great help to you. But there's there's still yeah. the voice in your head. How how was it? Was it difficult to fight those kind of nagging thoughts? Because at some point, you must have felt, like you said, with 10 to go, you're like, oh, my God, I can't do it. Do you know what actually stopped me from going? What? My body actually wouldn't allow me. I was so sore. Really? <laughs> like, I was sore. And then on Monday, I went for a recovery run. So, like, a little bit slower than a walk. I was mm-hmm. advised. Um, but, like, slower than a walk, whatever that is. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, but my body was sore, so I, 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 like, I had to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's actually what got me, you know? Yeah. So I'd be paying it for the long run. But, like, I was fine then. Tuesday, Wednesday, I done hot yoga Monday night. And that whole week, like, I do see dip a lot. But I done extra. I done extra ice baths at, like, two degrees. And then, like, hot saunas. Yeah. So it, was, it really helped. Yeah, that's that's amazing, though, because I, I often see you doing all those kind of things. And, uh you know, that the recovery factor of anything, like of, of any training is always something that probably people don't look at as much. Like stre- like even stuff like stretching, it doesn't have to be like intense yoga or anything yeah. like that, but, you know, stretching yeah. like ice baths, saunas. Like obviously the ice baths are a little bit different because of, it's a di- it's more difficult to do. Yeah. But you're you, just immersing yourself in water and you're just... Yeah, you put, I, I, I actually find the sea easier. It's better distraction. and stuff. Like I, I kind of always go with somebody. So you're either chatting or you go out for a little swim around and you come back but like the immersion in the cold water you're just sitting there now the good thing about the ice baths is you do your there's a sauna beside you so you know you can heat up like straight away yeah like but when you got into the sea swimming before that were you you know taking a dip in somewhere in 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 leash or was did it start in the sea never like even when i lived in canada I lived downtown Vancouver beside the ocean and I never had an interest. <laughs> never. Now, don't get me wrong. When I lived in Australia, I lived inland, Canberra, so I wasn't really around um, the beach that much. Um, but yeah, I just tried it once. I, came, I went up to Dublin. It was my sister that came with me and I just got hooked on it then. <laughs> and what, like, people will say, uh, what's the, what was the attraction to it? Why, um, what was the, I suppose there's a lot of reasons you do it, but what was the initial kind of attraction? To I just it? felt amazing after. Like, I actually, yeah. it's my, I'm adrenaline junkie. If you yeah. have no idea. I get hit from it. Like, it makes me feel so good. I get so much energy from getting into the ocean. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I get a higher life. And then I had, I had friends in Greystones at the time. So that was our little hotspot, the cove mm-hmm. out there. And it was just a combination of going up to them. They're fitness addicts as well. So, it was either like train and then get into the sea or we'd like go for a sea dip and then train. Mm. And it's just a combination of both just felt good. And then coffee afterwards. Yeah. And it was just a combo of it all. Yeah. Do you know what my problem with it was? And I, I gave it a go. I gave it a go uh, up in Dublin, as you know, and I gave it a go yeah. here in the lakes. And I think 
my feet. I just, I, I yeah. can really, like, what I got, I think, I think. <laughs> I they, love the torture, though. don't get me wrong. Oh, crap, like, oh. I, I work in a gym and then, like, when the winter, like, when it was really, really, like, say that, them mornings where it was, like, minus three degrees. Yeah. I'd be in work, like, and my hands, I just couldn't get the power in them. Like, and I'd be moving, training, exercising, coaching, and, like, the power would just not, yeah. I'd have to wait to go home and actually get a shower, but. I think I enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, well, that, I, I think that's it. Maybe I'm a little bit too precious about it because <laughs> I I was like coming out and feeling great. Like that's one thing, Neve. I would say yeah. obviously I was feel I was feeling great, but it got to a stage and I I'd, I'd done some up till like October in the lake, and then I did. I think I did the day after Stephen's Day in uh, uh, forty um, up where the you go, foot. forty foot. Yeah, sorry, forty foot. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I got up. To, I got into my like. It wasn't even, I don't know, it was just past my knees maybe. And I just said, yeah. I can't do it. But even then, my toes, like, I got in the yeah, car and the heat, hard. I just couldn't, I couldn't warm up. And I don't think it's I've really, got really it. really, really hard. Yeah, it is hard. Yeah. Sometimes you have a sauna nearby. My hands get the most, but, like, I get in every morning and I still mm. find it tricky. <laughs> I'm like, like, it's, my, my initial getting in is always like, oh, and but then when I'm in there, I could stay in there for hours. But then my problem is when I get out, I've stayed yeah. in for too long. And then <laughs> yeah. I'm like, fuck. So it's either into my car, warm up, hot drink, like lemon and ginger, flask lemon and ginger, like heaps of ginger in hot water, or get into a sauna somewhere. And we're and, started. And what did that's, you know, that's the ideal thing and I, and I do but I do love about uh, yourself going down there is you've clearly got a, a group of friends from it which yeah. is always to be great. honest that's how it made me move to Dublin I mm. was travelling up and down and just going to the Fortiful um, I just met a circle of friends Yeah, and then they were they'd like convinced me like you need to move up and then yeah one of the women that I actually met I think the very first time we went to the Fortiful Ali she's one of my best friends right now yeah. <laughs> which is lovely like it's, be it's beautiful yeah. kind of that you can get Still, I suppose it's like when you get to a to a certain age, you think I can't make friends anymore. I've got my set yeah. friends, but you can you can yeah. if you keep kind of doing uh you keep have doing to things. Out there. Yeah. yeah, you do, yeah. and and it, like sometimes that's tough. But you know, speaking of putting yourself out there, actually, um, when yeah. did you start jujitsu? I started jujitsu. Let me see. It was when I came home from Australia, mm -hmm. whatever year that was, and I started in leash with the honey badger from yeah. up here. Um, and I was trying to, I started, did before beginners course down there. Um, and then, yeah, I done, I was doing a mixture of everything. I was doing a bit of striking, jiu-jitsu, MMA. And then I moved to Dublin and then I joined Hulhan mm -hmm. Martial Arts. And same, I was doing a bit of striking, a um, bit of MMA, a bit of jiu-jitsu. But today I'm just all jiu-jitsu. I think because yeah. I have so much other things going on, like I had to cut back something. Like last summer, I, I actually physically burnt out. I had to stop everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had to stop everything. Um, so yeah, I just had to, yeah, cut a few things out for a while. Yeah, and like I know, and that's not for someone like yourself. That's not an easy thing to do, obviously. But you, yeah, prioritized certain things. And um, when you uh got kind of along your jujitsu journey, um, yeah. and you got your blue belt, um, what yeah. like people talk about like what belts mean to people and all that, and everybody has their own opinions. But what did it mean to you when you got it? To me, it was like the just been recognized. For like consistency, hard work, um, and just like acknowledging that you know what I mean that I put the work in because yeah. like you know what I mean? I've trained down in in Phil's for for a good couple of years and then obviously moving to Paddy's he could see you know the work ethic and the work I put in throughout the years in in Phil's gym mm -hmm. and like I think it was only a year in Paddy's when he gave me my blue belt so he could obviously see you know what I mean. Yeah, and so the, the the difference, you know. Yeah, and sometimes that's like a, a worry for people when they do go to another gym, as if like you know the, the work. A, I remember I drove outside Paddy Hoolins and I sat in the car. Yeah. I was like, I'm not going in here. I'm not going in here. And then obviously when you go in, you're just like, it, yeah, you're, it's just you're welcome to, straight away. Yeah, and he's a like he's such a big name in the MMA Irish MMA community as well. Yeah, and that there's serious that... fighters in there too. You know, I mean, it's just yeah. a really good cool club to be in. But um, yeah, I still like have never like with everything else I do and with training for the ultra and all the stuff like that. I still kept my jiu jitsu up, you know yeah. what I mean? Because I will compete again in jiu jitsu. The last competition actually, I tore ligaments on my knee, mm. so I was a little bit fearful to do anything again because I had the race coming up. I knew that was coming up in in the new year. Um, but yeah, my knees are fine now. Thank God, hundred percent. They healed really well. Um, so yeah, I definitely will compete again. But kind of just, I I think that. 
you know, uh, plays on the back of my mind sometimes. Uh, I think, like, I've I've been injured out running, you know, like a calf yeah. or whatever it might be. Yeah, something. Yeah, something's, you know, going to go at some point. But I, I had a meniscus problem and I, I got it in jiu-jitsu and it was just one of those freak kind of things. Yeah. And what happened to me, uh, more psychologically, I'd say, was I thought to myself, if I get injured, it means everything's gone. Like, you know, because everything because i'm a coach like yourself and i have to be able to show people how to do certain what things do. yeah and crossfit yeah. and jujitsu and all that yeah so, so yeah. i thought i like how but like mentally how did, did that set you back doing your ligaments oh God, like it killed me i remember yeah. it happening my knee was really sore but like obviously in competition your adrenaline's so high as well and i had like three more matches after it maybe two and then i, I kept going and then i i i just tapped I was like, right, let me out here. Mm -hmm. Just wasn't feeling it. Was in pain. And then I went home and I remember getting out of the car and been like, fuck, this is worse than mm -hmm. I actually think it is. Yeah. So I went to the injury clinic in Lockton Town the next morning. A friend brought me there and they actually not was broke, but I went to a physio, I have a physio in work. And then he had said it was my LCL um, to rest up. So I was able to do a bike, a spring class. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I'd done about 10 million spring classes that day, that week. Yeah. I couldn't run. I could. I couldn't really walk. Um, but I could. I could spin because okay. obviously, like, if I wasn't going out or in, I could move it forward. So I just, I did my regular strength and condition, my regular weights, jiu jitsu. I had to cut back. Obviously, couldn't do jiu jitsu for that week. For I think a few weeks, two weeks, maybe I stood out. But yeah, I just done heaps of uh, spin classes. <laughs> for yeah. ten million spin classes. You keep <laughs> like you kept something though. That's what's important, I guess. One hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So with with coaching as well, because um. Obviously, you're you're you do you do strength um and conditioning coaching? Would that be right? Yeah, yeah, I work in a gym in Dean's Grange. And was that always like something that you wanted to do when you were kind of when you were growing up? Sorry to phrase it that way, but you know 100%. what I mean. percent. When I yeah. left, yeah, I've always been there because when I left college, when I finished school and then my leaving started seventeen, I went to study business and sport and recreation. Right. And then I completed it, but then I obviously got ill, so um. Then I went traveling, but then when I came back, I fell back straight in there to fitness again. So it's always been there, always. But it's funny enough, when I was in secondary school, like I was always, I didn't really participate in PE that much or sport. <laughs> I tried, but it wasn't there. But it's you funny, just, isn't it? Was it was it the what they were doing though? Like, is it just the? I think so. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a yeah. little bit different. I think <laughs> I always had a passion for it. And like today, I would do nothing else. I wouldn't do anything else. Yeah, and and. Not. The, th the thing with you need, like, it's it's not only kind of what you uh, do and achieve, because people do look up to the coach in a certain way of of the fact that they, yeah. you know, you yeah. like to see you doing things and stuff. But yeah. it's obviously your personality, too, because you do, like, believe it or not, I, I well, you know, but I do it, too. Some people might be surprised by that. But um, I'm a different person when I'm on <laughs> in the CrossFit area, Jiu-Jitsu, whatever, because it, yeah. you, you do yeah. have to be you do have to be a certain way because you have to be supportive, but you also have to be a little bit kind of stern in certain circumstances or, or Absolutely. like, you know, that kind of thing. It's, but I would imagine, I'm just guessing now, but this is probably your suit, your personality down to the ground. Yeah. Say that again. Yeah. I'm just saying it, this coaching probably suits your personality down to the ground. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they hate to see me coming because they're like, you're the toughest one here. Oh, really? Kill them. But I kind of coach. I, 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 I always kind of tell them, like, I coach the way I train. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. when I train, I train. You're there to train, you yeah. know? Um, but yeah. They love it, really. <laughs> but they do. They, like, you know, it's one of those yeah. things where you go in, you're like, uh, uh, oh, this is going to be tough today. But when, when you leave a tough session, they also feel better. You know, you feel good oh, about 100%. it. 100%. Yeah, they um, love it. They love it. <laughs> I want to ask you, because this is something that's been brought up by me uh, a couple of times on the podcast. Um, High Rocks training. Uh, you've been doing yes. a bit of that. What, what's, what's, the, what's the plan? Yeah. It's a tough class i can tell you there's a really good gym out in bray so myself and one of the guys from the gym i work in have partnered up and we said that we'd get a competition going soon so we do it every wednesday night and it's just deadly it's just like a different level as well like for the first couple of weeks like and you know i train a lot and i do a lot but like like i've been doing that the last couple of weeks and like i wake up on a thursday and i'm like washed yeah. it just takes so much out yeah yeah. Um, but yeah, it's steady. It's a, not a different style of training as well. And I really, I really feel it afterwards. But the fact you can compete and like 
doubles and go mm-hmm. away and it's just another social thing as well and it's a good it's a good community it's a good buzz in there as well you know um, and yeah you're just killing yourself as well which is what I love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, um, I did the one in. You've been doing it too, have you? Well, I did the one in Dublin. I in the RDS. The, the, okay, I, savage. Yeah, savage. and to be honest, Neve, the the whatever about the training part, because obviously it was very tough, and you know I do train CrossFit, and so I'd I'd be doing some of the the training. What I didn't yeah. like about the event was just, and this is just me. I bet you this won't be any problem. Yeah. To yeah. Just, it was very loud, <laughs> and it was very. Yeah. It was like a DJ singing along to the music. Loads. I won't go. Into, I won't go into too much because I've I bitched about it on here so often. <laughs> but <laughs> but it's kind of yeah. <laughs> but they're sick of listening, to me moaning. But I think I don't think you know. I think most people didn't care about that element of it, you know, because they were clearly just <clears throat> dug in and yeah, and getting stuck yeah, in and stuff. Know, what's going on. Yeah, I mean, you can yeah. tune out of it, but um. I, I, I look when I was finished it. It was one of those things that I could tick off and say like at least I, I, I did it in you know. You've uh, done it exactly. Yeah. I like to go away, so I think maybe yeah. do one like maybe late summer. Find one that's away and go away mm-hmm. and do it, and then see how we go. That's probably a, a, yeah. Yeah, and the funny thing about that is like, so we had a group that went to Malaga to do it, and then they they did it with me in Dublin, and oh, they yeah, the, yeah they said that yeah. the Dublin one was terrible. It was like. The setup was bad. Yeah, the, where you push and pull, like the um, the sleds was the sled. sl- sticky. Yeah, so it was like harder to push yeah. them. Uh, so yeah. they 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 said compared to Malaga, it wasn't it wasn't great. But so it's probably a good idea for you to kind of head off somewhere else and do it. You know, I just love the sun too. You know what I mean? I yeah. would like to live in heat as well. I always think about it, but we'll see. We'll see. You are you are very fun actually because I didn't write yeah, I, that I, I like heat every heat heated formal classes, heated yoga, saunas. Yeah. I, I know I get into the ocean. I actually hate the cold, but it's just the the hit I get from the cold sea. Yeah. But once I go warm up after I'm okay. But yeah, I love the hot climate. Do you know what I mean? Ireland's good, but you know, the weather gets to me a lot. <laughs> yeah. Like I I do notice though that you have taken pictures. You lo- you do actually clearly like the sun, and even when it's Love like it. yeah, but even when it's like a cold day, you'll take a picture the with sun. the sun. Yeah, it's just there. It's it's. I love and, it. <laughs> well, look, this is you know again something that makes people happy and vitamin D and everything exactly. like that. I feel great. Yeah, yeah, it's all the good things. You know what I mean? It and is. even by the coast as well is a bonus because you always get that sun coming up. Yeah, you know that's I mean? that it's is beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Beautiful. When doing what you started doing hot yoga and and again people yeah. who people who love yoga maybe have not tried the the hot yoga. Why do you find it yeah. more beneficial than just regular yoga? I suppose. I just find it's obviously because you're in a heated room. Yeah, you can obviously stretch that little bit deeper. Now, I some people don't like it because you sweat a lot, yeah. but I enjoy that. Yeah. Like I like sweating a lot, and yeah, like the studios I do in are like forty two degrees mm. and I just feel incredible afterwards and I sleep like a baby like yeah. a baby um, the- because for me sleep was I kind of prioritise sleep right now but like the hot yoga like I'm mm. guaranteed a good sleep afterwards and you just get a good deep fresh like even after the ultra I done it on the Monday night and I don't know I, it, between that and the, the sun and the cold dips like Tuesday I was fresh <laughs> yeah. and you have like another little community in there as well Exactly. Yeah. Well, the, the the yoga studio that I'm doing now is out in Tala as well, so it's part okay. of the Jiu Jitsu. It's it's all the one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. It's all all the Perfect. one. I mean, the one route. So deadly. I understand the the idea. Uh, I suppose of people not liking the sweaty part of it, and maybe people finding it very intense. But I can imagine something like that with with what you do. It's it's quite beneficial for like. Um, for injuries and, and for your lungs and kind of things yeah, like, like that. Yeah, like touch wood, Derek. Like with all I do, I don't really get injured. Like I get yeah. sore, which is yeah. normal. Okay? Uh, I got injured the last time because that was like, that was just, that just happened. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just, that was just like it was torn from like whatever submission. Um, but like other than that, like I feel good. But everything, you know what I mean? Even my knees, thank God. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a particular submission that you like? I like the back, rear naked choke. When oh, I get okay. the back, I'm like, keep the back. <laughs> That's a classic. That's a, that is a classic. I've been doing, <laughs> like, I, I don't do a lot of um, nogi stuff. I do it most gi training. But yeah, okay. I, I'm a big fan of the Ezekiel with the gi. And um, 
I'm a, nice, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like I try like to try it with the nogi as well. So it's quite it's a little bit more difficult to get. But um, I love trying a nogi, but like at the moment the classes are like pretty much. I think a lot right now are in the gi, but it changes. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I get yeah. to train a lot in both. To be honest. Well, that's brilliant though. So, that that's yeah, you know yeah. I should be pushing myself a bit more to do. Nogi, but it's time as well because when those classes are on, sometimes I'm teaching downstairs, and you know it's mm-hmm. it's 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 time. But um, I do find that yeah, um, it's just to get it in, isn't it? Yeah, it's just it, yeah. I do find sometimes though, like because when there's like an 18, 19 year old in there and they're in nogi and they're flying around, and I'm like, oh, just stop moving for a second, let me just grab yeah. an arm or something, you know. But <laughs> leave but that's me alone. yeah, just leave me alone, like you know. You just but learn then, from, they're the ones you learn from, yeah. Oh, you <laughs> certainly learn from them, right? Yeah, yeah. But you, yeah. I do find with the gi, it's just the fact that my game is more based on bottom and uh, like game. slower, yeah. you know, slowing it down, grabbing yeah. the collars, yeah, yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. I just, that's just my thing. But we're all different. And that's what makes the we sport. All, yeah, so we all have our thing. Yeah, we yeah. all have our thing. You're a bit, I'd say you're a bit more feisty than I am. <laughs> I'd imagine. Yeah, pretty much. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. I do I'd enjoy say so. nogi, but like, um, if I, like, if I was to compete, it's always nogi first. Okay, right, right. Always. I much prefer to compete in nogi. But like if there's matches that you get a lot of matches in both, I'll sign up for both. But always number one is nogi. And could I ask like, you, I know did... my trend both equal, but I love nogi. Did you so start did you start in nogi or was it again like a mixture of the two? It was a mixture of the two because obviously right. before the beginners course is in a gi. So you learn right. everything in there. But yeah, I just yeah, we all have a favorite too, don't we? Oh, absolutely, and that like I said, that's that's the the joys of it. Like you know, and we get to know each other's moves, and then someone new comes in, and we're like, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's why but, it's nice going to different gyms because yeah. yeah, you get new bodies. It's great. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, I don't know. Actually, I was thinking of going to uh, the East Coast one in Savage. Yeah, yeah, and they're actually moving. Yeah, they're oh, they? location coming. Yeah, so you must go and check it out. I was like, I have such anxiety about these things, and I, uh, I'm just so awkward. It is nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, but like, do we think when you get there, like, it's just you just roll them, you know? Yeah, I, I, I think it's, <laughs> I think it's that initial thing of it's. I'm not even worried about the rolling. I'm more worried about the drilling because it involves kind of you know conversation with someone you don't know, and you're trying to suss someone out, and like. I know I have a podcast and I talk to people every yeah. week, but at the same time, it's not the ex- same thing as like one on one, you know, moving about. And I don't know. I think, I think I'll need to <laughs> no, do it I... just for myself. You know, I think. Let's see. Oh yeah, yeah, um, it's good though. Then you meet new people and you hear other things that are going on, and yeah. Do you think you've um, picked up but... any of the 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 accent, the Dublin accent? Sometimes when I'm in the changing rooms in Tallaght with the women, they're like, you sound dub. And I'm like, do I? <laughs> I have a thing of saying like, well, like instead of saying hello or yeah. hi, I'm like, everyone going, I'm like, well, and t- to them, that's a real country thing. Yeah, yeah. That's... So anytime they greet me, anytime I like the, the women greet me in the gym, whatever, like, well, because yeah. they're waiting for me to say that to them. But yeah, I think there's a few things I do say that, yeah. Because I mean, like I, I mix it a lot. Yeah, you know what I, mean? I think what made me ask the question was because we obviously got in contact again a few weeks ago and I was asking you to come on. And when you left the voice message, I was kind of like, that doesn't sound oh, really? like... I was kind of like, not every... <laughs> well, look, no. not, not every word, obviously. But, you know, sometimes there's something that will... Yeah, put, maybe you know, something. Yeah, maybe, like, maybe I don't notice, but like maybe you or someone else might notice. But, yeah. It's one of those things uh, where there's like... T- almost like time and distance between something because it'd been so long since I last spoke mm-hmm. to you. It was just a couple of words. Yeah. Like I grew up in I Dublin. Was living here. I was living at home actually when I spoke back. Yeah, I? you were. Yeah, yeah. I was living here. You yeah. were, t- I think you said uh, on that um, podcast that you were either thinking okay. about it or you were going. There was, you were, you, yeah. you mentioned. That, that, that's me all over. Like if I want to move to Dublin, I'm going to move to Dublin. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and I just, it just happens. <laughs> yeah. But you do, you like, that's, that's what I want to do in certain senses. Like talking about the gym there, like going to a different gym. That's what yeah. I want to do. It's just, you go and do it. Like, you know, that's yeah, the Yeah, just difference. go do it. It's yeah. like a couple of weeks ago, like I went out to Spain. I wanted to go train out in a gym out there. And I just went, just ran out to a different gym, train, a different country. It's deadly. 
But what's comfortable, what's great like about you is that you are comfortable. Clearly, you went uh, like abroad for four or five years on your own. Like you do like yeah. being on your own as well as being in groups. A hundred percent. Yeah. I'm sociable, but I'm very unsocial. If that makes sense. <laughs> At the same time. Yeah. No, it does. <laughs> it, it's the perfect. I people, but I like, and that's why I like coming down here sometimes to the country because, yeah, like it's just quiet. Yeah. <laughs> and well, even my phone, sometimes I'll just put my phone away. Like, I'll still obviously use social media and all the rest, but like, I don't use it as much down yeah. here. And it's good. It's good. You need that. I think we all need it a bit. I, I'm yeah. I'm in the process of kind of uh, getting a new place to to live, like and um, nice. I'm kind of looking, and I'm yeah, I'm out. Only gonna stay down there. Well, I think so. I'm out in the country here, and um, I, I'm playing with the idea of getting closer to a, a town. <laughs> and then I saw a house, and it was like out in the country. And I was like, sounds kind of nice. <laughs> I don't know if I like it too much. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I I love I I just need the coast anywhere anywhere yeah. the coast is good for me. Yeah. Um, the thing about this house, Neve, actually, which is which is probably the thing that kind of sold it. Uh, now, there's probably hundreds of people trying to get this house, but yeah. it's it's right on the lake. Like literally, the lake Gorgeous. is in front of the house, and it looks Gorgeous. it looks unreal. So maybe yeah. I could come out of retirement and get back into the cold uh, water. Yeah, you never you know. Yeah, you never know. We'll it might see. Change you. We'll we, see. We won't. We won't go overboard. Yeah. <laughs> um, but lake I wanted every morning and different <laughs> jujitsu gyms every yeah, week. Yeah, a new man, a new um. I wanted to ask you about, you know, all that you do and how it does help with your mental health. A hundred percent. Like it keeps me like occupied and I do all these things because I enjoy it. Like some people are like, do you train so much because you, you run from things? Yeah. And like, I, there is times where I like, I allow myself to sit down, but like, even when I go away on holidays, like people are like, go away and just relax but I don't enjoy that that holiday would be yeah. shit I'd come home and be like I had a shit time yeah. like if I go away in a week's holidays and I run train swim do pretty much everything I do in Ireland but not work I have, I've had the best holiday ever and it's the same here like I do all the training not to self-sabotage not to beat myself up because it makes me feel good I enjoy it like once I prioritize sleep and nutrition mm. and I have the energy to go for it or oh, then go for it but like the burnout last summer i learned a lot too you know yeah yeah i was asked before Neve, by a therapist actually um i think i mentioned i'd ran 20k or something that morning because he used to run 20ks all the mm. time and and, and he yeah. said to me uh what are you running away from and i never yeah i heard that exp- like somebody it is a good that. thing though it's a quite like yeah. i do question myself as well i'm like like what the fuck but i just yeah i just i enjoy it that's the that's the thing about it like it's almost like because i train quite a bit as, as well and it's almost like i have to defend the fact that i'm training almost like they're the, everybody's going well why are you why are you going so hard or why are you doing this right, or why yeah. do that? you know and that's a, it's an odd it's an odd way to to kind of knock someone rather than celebrate the fact that they're getting up early and they're going doing their thing you know yeah yeah exactly I yeah don't know. we can't win some can people admire it some people think you're crazy but i'm like Whatever. <laughs> we can, well, yeah, like like I said, we can't win. You know, we just yeah. we just we just do what we want to do and, do and enjoy it. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm. I people will wonder. Does Neve ever sit down and watch TV? Never. Okay. Fair Never. enough. Never. I'm gonna be hundred percent honest. Yeah. Like sometimes my house is like, have you seen this? Have you seen that? And I'm like. No. <laughs> so is it the case? So just just to kind of I don't you know not a not like a diary uh, of what you do, but but is it the case of like because obviously you you get up early, you go do your C dip or you run yeah. and all uh you know, your own work and yeah. then training that you literally it's it's up yeah. early, bed early, and and that's the reason. Yeah, pretty much. Well, I get I train like jujitsu till nine. I go home to talk you about half, and then I usually get my gear ready before I go to jujitsu, so I just have to come home and go to bed so mm-hmm. like i try to be in bed by 10 then I sleep by half the latest um and then yeah so like there's just no time there to watch tv and yeah. then like on a Sunday <laughs> night i like if i get to bed early it's a bonus and um, sometimes i will like watch um like documentaries mm-hmm. or something like but that's about it something of interest yeah to something of something of interest to what you do i suppose you know. Yeah, until, and then I fall asleep and, like it's still playing in my ear at two a.m. I'm like, oh, yeah, fuck. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm something that interests me, something that I'm doing, something that my people don't understand why 
um, I get up at quarter to six every morning. Okay, I just get up. That's when I get up, yeah. and I go for, yeah. go for my run or go into gym. But I also also yeah. do have the luxury of maybe an hour in in uh, before I kind of go and get up and do my thing, and I kind of catch yeah. up with like whatever on social media. You know the usual crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just to check it. Yeah, just to check it. And then in the evenings, I like to be in bed for ten. I like yeah, to like, listen to yeah. music and then I do what you do. I fall asleep with the music on and then I wake up and, yeah. you know, some weird music's on because uh, it's drifted right. into the, you know. <laughs> yeah. But but it's it's like um, so there's a sense of like discipline, but a sense of something like has been accomplished in the day. That's what I kind of like about it, I think. Yeah, exactly. And when you stick to, for me, like, because I have such a like structured routine and it works. Mm. And when I stick to it, I feel even better. Yeah. yeah. Do you do you um Good. do you j- journal or anything? I would write stuff down and like obviously if there's races coming up that I want to do mm-hmm. like or events I'll list them out so like I can block shit off and get ready for them almost. And um, but yeah, I would write down for sure. Yeah. yeah. I I've do I do this thing and I've done it for the past. Uh, it's actually it's over there, but I've done it for the past um two or three years where I write down what I trained in every day. So like you know. Couple okay, of sessions, good. CrossFit, Jiu Jitsu, the run, whatever. Yeah, daily, daily. And, yeah. and then, like, obviously, my hours, everybody has to write that. You know, why well, I have to write that down to remember. It. And then, like, yeah. uh, every so often, Eve, I do allow myself to watch a film. I do love films. Okay. And, okay. and yeah, I, I, like, today I did my little, my, I did my run and I came home and I watched a, a quite a long film, actually, but I kind of allow myself to just kind of chill in it and stuff like that. Hello. Yeah. But it, that to me is like, um, part of my kind of mental health routine in the sense of like, you know, to sit and just kind of get absorbed in at somebody else's story, you know, that's so it's kind okay. of, removed. and I yeah. think that's, that yeah. for me, is, it's not going to fit everybody's kind of story, mm. but it it definitely mm. helps me. And, you know, if I, if I, if I'm going into the gym, I'll bring my book with me and I, and I sit down nice. and have my little read. Yeah. That kind of stuff is, yeah. I think, it's, I think it's important, you know. It is for sure. I don't know. Like, I would watch if there's something good on, especially in the cinema. If it, like, it would have to be really interesting, mm-hmm. but I have really short attention span. Okay. So, like, yeah. <laughs> so, like... is it, it? I was going to ask you this probably this after you say in there about the short attention span. What's the last good film you saw in the cinema? Jesus Christ. It's been a long time ago. It probably was a date, like, yeah. 18 months ago. Um, boy, I don't even know. It was ages ago. Yeah. Ages no, ago. that's all right. I mean, it's look. I find the cinema just not, I don't know. I prefer watching films at home because I can pause Yeah, them. if you have the access to them. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes if I come home, like I go down to my sister's and her husband and we'd watch something together. But like, it's rare. <laughs> yeah, and this is, this is, and honestly, I, I say this uh, many times, Neve, when I'm asking this question. But to ask this of you is the most ridiculous one yet. But um, what do you like to do in your spare time? <laughs> So I like to do in my spare time. You don't uh, get any spare time. That's no, my spare time would be fulfilled with like maybe saunas or some thing yeah. like that. Like on a Sunday evening, it's a ritual, a sauna session. Uh, so I either go out to Greystones and maybe like I use the sauna. Maybe then I'll go for a little walk after. Like go out mm-hmm. with a friend and um, might grab a tea, go for a walk. Um, But like obviously that's after I've done like a run or jiu-jitsu yeah. or something like that. And then... In the evenings, then, if I have, like, nothing else on, I try to go to bed because it's probably the only sleep I get to catch up on, you know? Yeah. Um, and then coming home in my spare time is, is I like to come home as well. Um, you yeah, did run like, this morning, though, didn't you? I ran this morning, yeah. <laughs> so before you did... I came home. Oh, was that before you came home? Oh, sorry, I Not thought before. you... Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, another thing, the, do you do like to try out different places, though, with regards to saunas and stuff? Or is it just different, you, yeah. you know, the photos are from different angles or what? Is yeah, it, different or... different ones. Yeah, I like yeah. the outdoor ones. I just like the ambience of them and the outdoor experience. Um, but there's really, really good ones around Dublin. It's getting really popular. They're savage. There's That's one great. out in Glen Cullen after opening up, out in the Gap. And it's just amazing. Like, there's a window in the sauna that looks out into the mountains. So usually what we do... Uh, is like run the mountains and then sometimes jump in afterwards and it's just so good beautiful yeah. I mean that's perfect combination um, perfect if Neve, Neve if people want to uh, kind of follow your, your your journey and stuff where can they find you on Instagram just Neve Fitzpatrick Neve Fitzpatrick yeah. that's everything like... on Instagram is I do exactly what you see <laughs> yeah there's there's no there's no 
cheating or uh, CGI. No you know, there's none of that. <laughs> Neve is actually doing this stuff. I saw, uh, yeah. not to go over kind of old ground, what we were saying, but when you were putting up the videos of the um, the kind of ultra running and going up yeah. those kind of planks, uh, you, the, oh, people yeah, will be aware yeah. of the planks when they're out in different forestry yeah. areas and stuff. But yeah. All I'm thinking of, like when I'm seeing you, please don't slip on that plank. Please don't. That's all I think of. People <laughs> falling over. Well, I do. I do sometimes grab my phone out, and they're like, "How have you?" I do get messages out, like, "How have you not like?" Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know. It's just your football. I'm just get used to it after a while, won't you? Yeah, but like even you were on the snow a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah, that was that... treacherous. That was the ultra. It was proper snow in that morning, and then the wind and the hailstones, and it was sunny. Proper ultra experience. We started out with like proper snow, but it was deadly. It was a good experience. And do you yeah, know what I did? Do you know what I didn't ask Neve? And this is very bad on my part. How long did, were you out there for? Um, seven hours. I told That's myself mad. I was going to do it in seven hours, and I came back in seven hours. That's it. It, the mind yeah. so I had never done the ultra before. Like I yeah. never ran that distance. So I was unsure. Everyone's like, "What are you going to get going in?" And I said, "Do you know what? I worked it out, and I was like seven hours." And I came back in seven hours. I was like, sweet. I remember looking at me watch at one stage and I was out there for like whatever many hours. I, I mentally was like, fuck, I'm not going to get back in seven. And then, yeah, when I got back, then I was like, sweet. Strava, seven. Strava doesn't lie. <laughs> well, it's just mad to think, people, you know, but it's great. It's it's very inspiring. Um, Before we go, I want to ask, uh, what is the tattoo on your arm? Which one? <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, there's two. Sorry, <laughs> are so they I sleeve on one arm? Yeah. So I got it started. I got a a little bit in Vegas, right? And then I got a little bit in Vancouver, and then I went to Thailand so many times, and then I got the full sleeve in Thailand. And then the other one is just I think that was my first one. It says like, "What doesn't kill you makes you stronger." I think right. I got that in Spain when I was like sixteen. Classic. That's oh, a yeah. classic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Neve, you've been a, a a fantastic guest. Um, like you know, giving up some time in your uh, Easter Sunday. Uh, thank you very much yeah. for doing that. Thank you so much, Jerry. That's all right. Listen, if you don't mind sticking around for a minute, I'll close it out. We'll get a photo for the archives, and Sweet. we'll move on. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, thanks very much to John for doing the YouTube thing that he always does. I always thank my mum, my dad, my granddad, Jaron Calvin. I got to see my granddad yesterday. He came down to that loan. Uh, it was ninety. It was his ninety seventh birthday the day before, so it was really uh, a, a nice experience to see him. Um, uh, subscribe, like I said earlier on, uh, to YouTube. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook. We've gone off X. We're gone. No more. What's his name? What's your man's name? Elon Musk is it? Oh, yeah. Elon Musk. That's Ooh. him, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No more Elon. You don't have my custom. <laughs> and we're also on Spotify, Apple, Anchor, Google Podcast, etc. For everyone who tuned in today, thank you so much for doing so. We really appreciate it. And Neve, once again, thank you so much. Thank you, Derek. All right, everyone. See you next week. Bye.